So I love being positive. You know, as, as much as the next guy, I, I honestly believe that if you surround yourself with positive news, positive information, positive people, if your perspective on the world is positive, then on the balance, not always, but on the balance, your experiences of the world will be positive. Which is why when we do these musings, I do the best I can to share new information, get people thinking in different ways, share with you my own thoughts about my own perspectives, right? But the truth is, the musings do well because I'm also honest. And so this is an honest conversation, which is not necessarily positive, but it's honest. Let me also just say that there are some of you who are going to be offended by this conversation and, you know, tough, be that as it may. I just want to have a conversation quickly with um, white South Africans. And that's as broad and as specific as I'll have it. I honestly think that on the average, you guys have to decide if you want Project South Africa to work. I, I do. Um, and I imagine there's some of you watching this going, oh, how can Vusi say this? I'm offended. You know, if it doesn't apply to you, then don't take offense. But I think the, on the average, you guys have to decide if you want Project South Africa to work. Here's the evidence. We're in 2018, which means we're 24 years to, into our democracy. And in these 24 years into our democracy, we've not meaningfully transformed our society. We've not transformed the spatial planning. We've not transformed the dispersion of economic power. We've not transformed access to financial markets and financial resources. We're not transforming economic participation. We're not transforming the uh, education system. We're not transforming logistics and how far people live from the main towns. We're just not transforming it. And the reason it's not being transformed, and let's be honest for a minute, is because even though there is very well-regarded law and policy to argue for transformation, in truth, most white people, you guys have found the most creative, most ingenuitive, innovative ways to work your way around the system. That's the truth of it. I mean, let's just be honest. Whether you want to call it fronting when it comes to ownership and, and, and employment equity in, in organizations and businesses, or you want to look at what they do in preferential procurement when you lock black businesses out because they can't get good pricing, pricing mechanisms. All of that is this very well-constructed, sophisticated mechanisms, even legislation, regulation. You know, this, now if you look at the regulation to participate in markets, it's different to the regulation that was there when the firms, which are now white, were started. So the black guy starting a business in today has to pay a premium to operate with a regulatory environment that you've written but you're 40 years in, and he's starting day one. These are all very clear and deliberate attempts to thwart transformation. And I think the truth is this, and it pains me to say this, but I think the truth is that the average white person thinks the miracle of 1994 was not a miracle. I think, I think you guys just think it was just like, oh, well, it was just an event. No, it was a miracle. I don't think you fully appreciated how close we came to a civil war. I don't think you have. I don't think you fully appreciated how close we came to losing this entire country. I don't think you have. Because if you had done, black people wouldn't need to consistently remind you of the need to transform. They just wouldn't do it. You know, today in our fund, we work with entrepreneurs, predominantly not exclusively, but predominantly black. And it's easy to see why it's hard for them to get into the supply chains of big white businesses. First, they ask you to bid for work. And by the way, we now have case studies where when they ask you to bid the, for work, they have long since chosen the white service provider who's going to do the work. They're just asking you to bid because the procurement policy says we've also got to have, give opportunities to black businesses. So they ask you to bid for work. You go in and you bid. They give you this long, drawn-out, strewn process because in hope, there, there is a hope that you're going to give up somewhere in the way. But let's imagine you've got grit and you keep going. Then you finish, and at the end of the process, they come back to you with uh, several reasons why you didn't get the opportunity. And then you find out, and we've got case studies and evidence to show this, that when you find out what decision they're making, they're already committed to a established white business to do the work. I think guys just decide if you want it to work or not. I don't, think, I don't think people understand this, and it's in my book, so I'll make the point again. Any society that locks out the majority is not sustainable. Any system that disenfranchises the majority of participants is not sustainable. 
And because we've not, I suppose, had a war in South Africa, not for a long time, I think people take for granted what happens when you have people who are not happy. In fact, the, the truth is the war started. It's quite, it's quite subversive at the moment, but it started. What do you think land grabs are? Land grabs are people saying the institutions you've put in place don't work for me, so I'm going to go take it. It's starting as land grabs. It won't stop as land grabs. So this is a plea. White South Africans, wherever you're sitting, right now, and I imagine you're watching this, and if you're watching it with your black friends, you, you know, Vusi is kind of right, and then when you go home, you'll tell your, your partner, your spouse, or your friends at the bride, and you'll be quite pissed about what I'm saying. But I have a responsibility, to be honest, because I love my country and I want to see it work. White South Africans, make a decision. Do you want it to work or don't you want it to work? Are you embedded in this project called the Rainbow Nation or are you not? Because it can't just be the Rainbow Nation on the 27th of April when we celebrate the vote. It can't just be the Rainbow Nation on Heritage Day, which you then have the audacity to call Bride Day. You know, I left the funeral of Muhammad Tigizela Mandela and on the drive home, went past a restaurant, and I couldn't believe how many white South Africans were sitting at a restaurant. Full. It was brimming with people. On the day we were celebrating, or we were, we, were, we were mourning the loss of arguably one of the strongest women this country has ever produced, I could count in one hand the number of white people I saw at the stadium. They were all at the restaurants. So the truth is, we need to decide if there is a nation here or not, if there is a project here or not, if we are one or we're not. But can we just stop with the PR and the BS? You know the PR, the stuff that you guys put out on PR and you say we're doing this with our business and we're helping this small black business. I said to somebody the other day, if you are a large white business and you can tell me the name of a small black business that you're helping, you know what that tells me? You're not helping enough small black businesses. You should be helping so many you can't name them. It's like the white person that says, oh, I'm not racist. I've got a friend. His name is Tabu. The fact that you know his name gives you a sense that you still see him as different from you, that he's a singular in your world of, of, of majoritarianism. Just decide if you want it to work, guys, honestly. Because fr frankly, I'm just at a point where I'm getting sick and tired of having to walk over and walk past the eggshells that black people are put through, these high walls we have to jump. I see, let me just end it by saying this. The truth is this, for the average person watching this, the messaging mentally has been that if it's black, it's incompetent until it proves otherwise. And that if it's white, it's competent until it proves otherwise. And if you don't acknowledge that you hold that bias, then I have news for you. This country of ours is never going to work. 